Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. This is just a little introduction to this video that's going to be coming up in a moment. Uh, there's a couple of little things that you need to know before you watch it. So this video is uh, based on the astrophotography session that I had last night. We actually had some clear skies last night for the first time in goodness knows how long. So I was able to get the telescope out, go to the shed, try doing some astrophotography. It didn't go according to plan. It didn't go that well. Now there was a good thing where I think I may have, well, not, I'm not gonna say I discovered a comet, but um, I certainly stumbled across something which I thought may very well have been a comet, um, but it was purely by chance. And uh, it, that was quite interesting. Obviously I filmed that. Um, but unfortunately I used the Hero 4 to film it. And I didn't know this, but if you have the Wi-Fi setting switched on on the Hero 4, it puts some weird noises on your soundtrack. So essentially the, the soundtrack on this video uh, coming up is a little bit on the duff side. And a bit later on, it gets even more duff, um, but then it goes okay again. Um, so that's just kind of to forewarn you because this is quite a long video. And also um, the, <laughs> The, the telescope was playing up, so I, you know, I was trying to get the telescope to work for some of the evening. So I filmed all of it. I've salvaged what I can from the Duff Sound uh, segment, so I cut a few big segments out. But um, what I have got that's sort of watchable is, and, and is okay, uh, I've put together in a video, and that's coming up right now. So that's it for this little introduction. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Obviously, do feel free to uh, give me a feedback, and uh, if you happen to know what that what I think was a comet, if you happen to know what that was, please do let me know because I have no idea what it was and I'm kind of really curious. Anyway, that's it for me. On with the video. Greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I do hope you're having a great day. Happy New Year, by the way. It's the middle of February and this is my first video of 2019. I've basically been in sort of hibernation mode, really. Uh, this cold weather just kind of shuts me down and I really haven't been uh, in the mood to sort of do anything. I just haven't uh, felt that inspired. So I just haven't done anything. But that all changes tonight. For the first time in, oh, I've lost count, but it seems like a year, um, we've got clear skies overnight. So I've got the telescope out, I've got it set up, and I'm gonna have a night of astrophotography. So I've just got to go and set up the telescope. It's all it's all out there. It just needs a lining um, and then make sure that it talks to the computer here. And then uh, hopefully we can have a nice evening of astrophotography. So give me a moment and I will be back. Right, we're sort of in business. Um, it's all aligned. I've just pointed it at the moon. Uh, you're not going to see that with these lights off, but I'll, I'll sort the lighting out in a minute. Um, but yeah, we just pointed at the moon and it's looking directly at the moon. So I'm going to be trying out something um, this time round. Uh, I'm going to be using my standard T adapter to go on the Canon EOS 1300D, which has been Astro modified. Um, but I'm going to be using a, uh, a Bader Semi APO filter. I don't think you can see that in there, that little um, filter there. That should take out some of the chromatic aberration that the um, the Explore Scientific AR152 produces uh, because it is a doublet refractor. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm also trying out for the first time this on the front of the camera, which is a double converter. I've never used one before. I don't know what the result's going to be with it, but I'm going to put the, uh, the T-piece on the front of the double converter, and then I'm going to go and pop that onto the front of the telescope, connect the camera up, and then hopefully we'll be in business. So just give us a second and we'll run from there. Right, there we go. Uh, the camera's now on the tripod. I've just focused it um, just roughly just to, uh, uh, to you know, give me something to work with. It, the, the scope of focus uh, was enough to accommodate that double converter, which I was a bit worried about because I was winding it out and out and out and out and out and eventually it came into focus. I thought I was gonna run out of focus travel before that happened, but we're okay. Um, now, um, one of the reasons I haven't done this in, uh, you know, almost a year is basically, and, and it's why I didn't really take into consideration when I first bought the telescope, is the UK can have, you know, 363 days a year of overhead cloud um, at night time, and that's exactly what's been happening. Um, we've had such few um, clear nights, and uh, the 
odd occasion when we have had a clear night I haven't been available so this is the first time in a long long time I've been available and we've got clear skies at night so um, I'm hoping to sort of make the most of this but because I haven't done this for so long um, I'm sort of uh, I'm realizing I've forgotten a lot of stuff and I'm just trying to have to kind of feel my way back back into the game again um, now earlier today I did uh, do some test runs. I did test run all of these um, uh, the programs that I use. I also updated Windows because this computer hasn't been switched on for almost a year so that took about two hours to update so I'm glad that I had the foresight uh, to check the computer and, and update during the day when I was setting the telescope up um, so that I wasn't waiting for two hours, you know, losing two hours of light. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start up Backyard EOS and straight away I can tell you I cannot remember the processor um, on the camera because you need to know what type of uh, um, camera you've got. I, th I think it's the Digic 5. Um, it's the EOS 1300D. I'm going to try the Digic 5. I'm presuming it won't connect to the other ones anyway if I'm wrong. I think that's connected. Right, okay. Let's have a go. Fingers crossed. The first time in a year. Hit planet tree. Do we get an image? Yes, we do. Yes. And it's of the moon. And that's looking pretty... Um, that's pretty in focus, actually. It's a little bit off, a little bit soft. Uh, but that's not bad. I'm quite impressed with that. Um, so there we go. Oops. Uh, now i just got to remember how to do everything. Um, let's have a look. If I move over to... Can I move? Uh, yes, I can. I'll go to that bit over there because it's a bit more interesting. Oops. Uh, nope. Double click. Locked. There we go. Hit five times. And yeah. So that's pretty blurry, you can see. Uh, you can also see that those blue shadows. That's the chromatic aberration. Now, um, I'm not going to worry about the moon tonight. I mean, I, I've done the moon loads of times before. But I have been doing some research on a computer today. I went to dsobrowser.com and I looked up what's going to be in the sky tonight. And there is a whole list for us to get through. Now, I'm not going to be doing any serious um, astrophotography tonight. I'm just going to have a little skip around the universe or skip around the neighbourhood um, and uh, just have a quick look at anything and see if I can get any snapshots of stuff. Obviously, when you're doing astrophotography, um, you kind of need to pick one and spend the whole night photographing it. And uh, you get, you know, multiple photographs and then you layer them, um, you blend them together. But I'm not going to do that tonight. I need to get back into this. I want to enjoy, because um, I, I do find that quite tedious when you're just photographing one object. Because um, literally all you're doing is just waiting for the camera to do its like two or three minute exposures each time. And it's just a question of killing time. Um, but yeah, tonight I'm just going to have a, a work through this list. And as I wrote the list down, I started to realise that the... The, the later on the list, um, the magnet, the is it the magnitude was a lot higher. Now I assume that means that the these items later on the list are the brightest. So I'm going to work my way through this list backwards, um, or maybe start doing backwards. If I'm finding I'm not getting anything, I might start at the other end of the list. Um, but I think the the DSO browser seemed to, to list them in or reverse order of magnitude. Um, so, uh, but I only re I only realised that halfway through the list when I was writing it down. So, um, what I need to do is point the thing to a star. So let's open up Stellarium. Hopefully, you can see it. It's going to go on this screen. I've got a little monitor down here actually for you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm actually monitoring this on my phone, um, which is really good. I, I um, I've got the Hero 4. Normally I record this on the Hero 2, but tonight I'm using the Hero 4 and that's got Wi-Fi. That enables it to talk to my phone and I can monitor uh, what's going on. So hopefully I can see what you're seeing um, and uh, that's all good. Right, please don't do this to me again. Stellarium wouldn't start um, earlier today. I had to delete it and reinstall it. No, it's doing it. Okay. Um, I think it was the update on Windows. It just It just wouldn't work. Um, so, all right, so there we are. We're pointing at the moon. Uh, hopefully you can see. Let me drag. Oh, I can't drag Stellarium, can I? Um, no, I'm going to have to stick with Stellarium over here. You're going to have to see the results from the camera here. But, um, right, I'm currently pointing at the moon. 
and I need to find a bright star. And the brightest star I can see there, what's that one? That's Murfak. Never heard of that one before. Oh, there's there's Alder Baron there. Um, so I'm going to slew the telescope to Alder Baron. Uh, so control one, that should send the telescope on its way. No, that way, that way. I think it's going to come round. Why is it going that way? Uh, okay. It's only look, it's a little tiny short hop. Oh, I know what it's going to do. It's going to go the whole uh, 360 degrees around the other way. Um, anyway, once that goes there, I'm going to put this on and then we'll get some um, focusing done. I'm just going to go and check on it, make sure it doesn't bang into the, uh, the post. See you in a second. No, that's fine. It was doing wacky things earlier. Uh, when I connected it to Stellarium during the day, it started, I'd say, going one direction, it would go in the other direction. And, and at one point, I thought it was actually going to hit the telescope into the uh, the post. Um, so um, it's fine. So, right, okay, it's pointing at Older Baron. Let's. Uh, there's nothing there. Hello. Oh, I'm tuned in five times. Let's see. Is there a. Let's turn off the. Thing. Oops. No, it's not pointing at anything. Why is that? Um, okay, that's not a good sign. <sighs> I wonder if I've set it up wrong or. Um, okay, let, let's just point. There's a little bit of a cluster going on up there. Let's point to a bright star near Alder Baron. Uh, on this side. Let's, oh, there's Mars over there. Let's point to Mars. See if I can. Uh, I wonder if Mars is going to be bright enough that I can get a, um, a focus on it. Although, to be honest, if that's if that's off, I might just zoomed in. No, I'm not. Well, I should be looking at a star. What am I doing wrong? I can't. In fact, there are no stars there. Why is that? Should, I should be at least seeing stars. What am I doing wrong? I can't, I can't remember what I'm. I can't remember how to do this. Uh, let's take a photograph and see what happens. Let's take a bold photograph for eight seconds on ISO uh, 800. No, 3200. Uh, let's just see see what we've got there. Um, but I sh I'm pretty sure I should have been seeing stars there. Let's have a look. Downloading. Uh, they're really faint. Why are, the, why are the stars really faint? Nine seconds on 3200. I'm doing something wrong, aren't I? What am I doing wrong? Have I got the... Uh, look, the ISO is up to 3200. If I go on planetary, uh, or frame of focus even. No. Why is it so dark? ISO is 3200. We're on manual, bulb. Um, I just gotta check a thing. Figured it out. It was the, the double converter was making it uh, the. It just wasn't in the field of view with the double converter on. Took the double converter off, and then I could see everything. So what I did put the double converter back on, and uh, then I just um, uh, just physically move the telescope until it lined up actually in the in the little thing so we're looking at mars at the moment but that's with the um the batting off mask on so now if i go back to Alder Baron, hopefully it's just going to be a short hop i've still got the the batting off mask on it shouldn't fall off because it's just balanced on the front um, but hopefully 
you should see something on there now. Obviously with the double converter on it darkens everything down a little bit, you lose uh, some light, but hopefully fingers crossed, there we go. Right, so let's zoom in on that. Um, we'll zoom in on that, double click, and then we'll go to five times. Now, am I actually going to be able to do I have to I'll do focusing with the um, batting off mask on. In fact, that looks completely in focus. You've basically got your cross, like so, and then you've got the, the line in the middle. And that line is exactly in the middle. So I think I might have just got lucky and have um, put that on and it's just completely focused. I mean, I did it sort of roughly by eye, but I think... There's no, there's no scope for me to move. I, I know it's really difficult to see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Um, but if you imagine, I can show you. Hopefully, you can see. You've got a, a line going there, and then you've got a line going there, which is cross. And then this, this line here. When you adjust the focus, there, it, the line moves left and right. And the idea is, you want the line exactly in the middle of the two crossed ones. And that's exactly what I got. You see those three dots there, they're evenly spaced. Same on the bottom there, they're evenly spaced. Um, so if I went out there and ch turned the focusing, that middle one would move closer to one of the outside ones. So And then that would defocus it. So that is focused. So I think we're in business. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the batting off mask off, come back and we can start our journey. Cool, exciting stuff. Right, I think we're in business. So what we're looking at there is uh, Older Baron. Let's go and have another quick peek at Mars. Um, and we should be in focus. Now obviously video of Mars is going to be rough, but I might be able to get a good photograph of it. Um, <clears throat> it's right next to Uranus as well. No jokes, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, we're on five times. If I undo that. There we go. There is a tiny little dot there. Is Mars. Let's do five times. That's um, video footage. Right, let's take an image. So, bulb. Six seconds, ISO 1600. Let's just have a look. Uh, this is Mars. And I'm not looking to photograph Mars now, I'm looking to photograph um, a lot of these are galaxies and nebulas. And uh, what is that? That looks like a. That looks like a comet. I'm pretty sure it can't be. Okay, let's have a look at Mars. I'm going to have to put the duration down a bit. Let's do another capture. It's like a red dot planet with a, a sort of a tail on it. Might have just been a fluke. No, it's still there. Hmm. Okay, look at the... Can you see the... the that purple is chromatic aberration and that's inherent that's caused by the, the configuration of the uh, the refra refraction telescope I've got and that's with the uh, the APO filter on it, the semi APO filter without it that would be even worse um, but anyway that is Mars it's kind of not quite a red planet is it let's see if we can slow the shutter speed down to one second let's see if that makes it any more interesting um, no, it's still too bright. All right, let's put the, the ISO down to 100. 100 ISO, one second. Let's see if we get anything that slightly, even slightly resembles a planet. Which is, um, uh, sort of. It's still very, very rough. Um, but that is Mars. That's planet that we're going to go and um, well, I can't say invade can we in fact it's already been it's a, it's a planet 
um, dominated by robots at the moment, oddly enough. Um, but uh, let's see if I can get the shutter speed down even slower. Um, so look, if I go down to half a second, um, ISO 100. Now I could. This is where I have a dilemma because I, I could jump out there and get some more powerful optics onto the telescope to zoom in on that and get hopefully get a better picture than the the blob that we've got here at the moment. But of course it means breaking the camera down and then I'm going to have to refocus and it just kind of takes a lot of faffing around. Now I know the camera is focused um, because uh, well it just is. I'm, I'm, when I looked at, where was it? Well, I'm assuming the camera's focused based on that batting off reading, but I was doing it with the double converter on. So, um, don't know, don't know. Let me, uh, let's have a quick look at the moon. Let's have a quick look at the moon because we'll see straight away whether or not it's in focus. I should have done that as soon as I took the batting off mask off just to double check. Um, but I am curious about that that blob there because honestly it looks like a comet um, oops how can I zoom look can you see that you might not be able to see it I, I can't see whether you can see that because I've got a blooming great big I've got a big button in the way right where I'm trying to look so um, I can't see if you're seeing that but I'm going to go back and photograph that one once we hit the moon just make absolutely sure that we're um, there we go here comes the moon just make absolutely sure that we're totally focused um, let's get the ISO down the shutter speed down there we go that's more like it right so that's the moon it's sort of a bit low but uh, how focused is that? That's what I want to know. If I take a photograph of that, um, it's just half a second, 100 ISO. Just want to see how sharp it is, how clear it is, whether it needs focusing again. Um, like I say, I, I think things are going to be a little softer anyway. Yeah, that's just not very good, is it? Um, I think because to another one at one twentieth because we're using the double converter I think anything I take with it is going to be a little bit softer um, that's pretty soft actually that's not very sharp um, I might knock the might knock the double converter on the head if I can't get that sharp um, I mean, it's, you can see the detail, but it's just not very sharp. Right, give me a few minutes. I'm going to go and do some experiments. I'm going to take more photographs. I'm going to just tweak the focusing just a little bit more and see whether I can get a better picture, a clearer picture. If I can't get that really sharp, then I'm going to take away the double converter uh, and then just go back to the, uh, the you know, the basic uh, camera straight onto the telescope. So I'm going to go and have a little tweak, and I'll see you in a second. Right, uh, I've done a little bit of uh, tweaking with the focus, and that's much, much clearer. Um, hopefully you can see, uh, it's only when you zoom right in that it, it gets a little bit blurry, but that's much better. I think we're really properly focused now. Um, so I'm just going to take one more picture. Um, this is with a double converter. Now if I didn't have the double converter on I'd probably get the whole moon in. Um, but as it is, uh, and it does seem to be losing its tracking. Every time I take a picture, <coughs> if I just take another picture, if that moves down, yeah it's moving down. So the, the, the telescope's not tracking very well there. Uh, so I may need to get the guide, guide scope involved um, a bit later on. But we're set up now, we're in business, uh, it is focused, there's a good clear picture of the moon there and uh, if you go to that sort of slightly interesting area there you can see 
that's not bad at all that's pretty sharp um, which is good I'm happy about that so let's find somewhere on our list and uh, see what's what right then uh, so it's NGC 6384 NGC uh, 6384 all right let's do a search oh that's interesting. According to DSO Bowser browser.com, that was going to be in the sky and it's looking at the ground. I wonder <laughs> I wonder if I had my location wrong. Let's try the one at the top of the list, uh, the cone nebula. Uh, actually no, I'll just I'll just try one more. NGC 1300. Okay, so that's NGC 1300. Uh, ah, there we go, that one's in the sky. Maybe I, maybe by the time I got to the bottom of the list, I was writing them down fairly fast. Maybe I missed the, uh, the elevation loop on that one and it was actually on the ground. So this one is above the ground, although it's south facing. Oh, it's kind of looking straight at a street lamp. But it should look something like that. Uh, oops, hello, what's going on here? There we go, right. Um, it should look something like that. I've got a feeling I'm not going to... Let's just send the telescope there. I've got a feeling I'm not going to be able to photograph that. Although, according to this list, it's the brightest object um, on my list. But looking at that, it's so kind of far away as well. Be surprised if we actually pick anything up, but we'll give it a go. Why not? Let's just take a look. Um, so the telescope is on its way, coming in. It's pretty low on the horizon as well, which means it's you've got lots more noise going on on closer horizon. The, the clearer or the further up you go, the more um, the more clear the skies are and the, the better quality of the pictures you're going to get. But I, to be honest, I'll be very surprised if anything shows up on that um, I mean it's actually that low it might even be looking at my fence let's do a quick snapshot uh, just to see just this one second snapshot just to see whether it's actually looking at the shed um, in fact it might be sort of aiming here uh, let's find out no nothing let's do it Oh, that's because I had the ISO right down. Let's do the, put the ISO up and whack it up to six seconds. If it's just a blurry kind of street light colour, we know it's actually on the building. If it's not, um, we might see a couple of stars. And yeah, that's hitting the building. You can see it's just just a big blurry mass. So okay. In fact, I'm going to tick these off as I go. So can't do that one, can't do that one. NGC 3169. Let's try that one. Oops, wrong window. Uh, nope, done it again. <laughs> I've only had one of those, honest. Um, right, NGC 3169. 3169. Okay, that is. Uh, it's going to be. That's east as well, so it's. Uh, no, that's. Literally, a street light is right there, and then houses, so that's too low in the sky. Although it's still early, it's only half past seven in the evening at the moment, so that that may actually be on its um, you know rising trajectory or whatever they, they, they want to call it in astrological astronomical terms. <laughs> it's been two years, you'd think I'd know the difference now between astronomy and astrology, wouldn't you? Um, NGC. 2976 2976 Oh, well, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try that again. NGC 2976 2976. I've got a load of pictures all over the sky now. What's that all about? Um, <coughs> I think we can turn those off. Nope. Uh, there we go. Right, so that's. Oh. That is, uh, come on, zoom in. Oh, that's, that's directly overhead. So 
Toronto and it's near both Gareth Galaxy, the Cigar Galaxy and the Garland Galaxy. That's so far away, look, there's, a, there's no actual photograph of it. I, we'll give it a go, we'll have a look, it's straight up. Um, but that's, I do believe, is a galaxy. And again, I'm not sure um, how bright it's going to be. But according to, like I say, according to my list, the, the higher, I'm assuming the higher number magnitude, the brighter the object is. Um, <clears throat> I mean, don't bear in mind, I'm still very, very, very much a beginner here. So um, the amount of experience I'm getting uh, with this telescope is just so minimal. Um, I mean, it's going to take me the rest of my life to even get a, a reasonable grasp of, of this stuff. Um, Let's just take a snapshot. Hopefully we'll get some stars this time um, because uh, it's pointing straight up. So it should be like the clearest area. Um, all sorts of clusters and things going on up there. Um, yeah, there's not a lot happening there. Uh, let's turn some of the noise down. Let's do a 40 second image there. Um, but I can't, I can't see a lot going on there. A couple of stars, ever so noisy because the ISO was up to 6400. So this new one is uh, 3200, so it should be a little less noisy. <coughs> but I'm quite impressed um, in so much as I was able to set the telescope up um, first time this time round. Um, yeah, I can't see much. Can't see much going on there. Sometimes I've been out there trying to get the telescope aligned, and I've had to like switch it on and switch it off like loads of different times and type in everything again to make it work. This time around, for some reason, it just went right first time. There was a little bit of a smudge there, but that's just too faint and distant to see. I tell you what I'm going to do before before I do any more on the list. I'm going to go back to Mars try to suss out what that smudge was, what I thought was a um, comet. We'll go back to Mars. I'm just curious about that, like I say, that smudge. Where is it? We'll go back to that Mars picture. Yeah, that there. I'm curious to know what that is. Um, it's because it photographed again, so it, it wasn't just a you know, something flying by or something. That, there's, there's something there, and I don't know what it is, and I'm curious. So I'm going to do a. Let's get the ISO down to 1600, and I'm going to do a 45 second shot, and this will be of Mars. Now Mars will be really blown out, but hopefully I might get some more detail on that. Now, once again, this is not a perfect night to do it. Although it's clear all night, you've got the moon like high in the sky. Um, and in for astrophotography, actually it's not that high in the sky, um, but for astrophotography it's not ideal because it kind of puts this pale wash over everything. Um, so it just kind of makes things difficult to photograph. I mean, in an ideal world, I want the moon to be sort of, you know, out of sight, and that would give me a really dark sky to work with. Um, but uh, at the moment, like I say, I have so few clear nights, um, I just have to, you know, take what I'm given. That's interesting, it's there now, <laughs> it's on the other side. Um, but that, that's a comet, it's got to be. Look at it. Um, how can I zoom in on that? Ah, there we go. That, that must be a comet. I don't, how do I, how will I find out what that is? In fact, what I will do, I'll take a really decent exposure. I'll go to ISO 800. I'm going to do a two minute, uh, I'll do a hundred second exposure see if I mean what are the chances of me spotting accidentally stumbling across a comet in the sky 
that's strange. That's just really weird. Is there? Let me let me do a quick Google search. Um, I don't even know what to ask. Uh, uh, comet in the sky tonight. Night sky custom star maps, Chris. Comet watch, upcoming comets, where to find them. Here we go. So we got the long awaited naked eye comet 46p. Uh, Wertanen has finally reached a respectable attitude and brightness. At the time of writing the comet, this is the, oh, the 6th of December 2018. Um, that can't be it. I don't think I'm going to be able to photograph that any better. Or am I? Let's let's do a longer exposure. The thing is, I've actually, I mean, that was a hundred second. I've got now I've got elongated stars, so I'm going to have to turn on my guide scope. Um, uh, it's connect all. Let's see what happens. See, it's been a year since I've used this. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember how to use it. Um, but yeah, we've got elongated stars, so the telescope's not tracking perfectly. But that, that's, that's got to be a comet. That's got to be. I couldn't think of anything else in the sky that would be that shape. It's quite exciting. That's really good. Um, let me... Oh, where are we? Begin looping exposures. Begin going... Right. Ah, here we go. Right, we've switched on. Uh, need to find a star. Choose that one. Oh, I think you've got to press. Is it shift and start? Yes. Force calibration. Are you sure you want to force calibration? Okay. Right. Oh, declination. Uh, am I West Point? I can't remember. I'm just going to go unspecified. And then hopefully. So that's that's my chair making that noise. By the way. Um, now this push here dummy, I'll let me bring it over to here so you can see it. Um, up here you've got the star and then you've got the telescope trying to do a calibration to figure out which way it's got to, I'm assuming, it's got to figure out which way it's got to make the motors drive in order to keep that star in the centre of those crosshead. So it's doing a, a thing. I don't know there must be something on on here to tell me that oh there cal it's doing calibration so i think i think that's cal is like red okay calibration not completed that's good um dark library in use all devices connected okay so i just need to basically let it do its thing and then hopefully what will happen with the guide scope. It's like a little separate telescope that's on top of the main telescope and it, it picks a star and as the star moves it tries to send signals to the motor in the telescope to keep that star in those crosshairs. So you shouldn't get any star drift, hence you shouldn't get any um, like these stars here, there, if you zoom in on them they're, they're long, they're elongated, and that's because the telescope has moved very, very slightly and uh, it's caused that little bit of a line. But hopefully, with the um, this doing its thing, you should get round stars. All theory, but it has worked before, so hopefully touch wood is going to work again doing its calibration I presume. Right, it's now calibrated. The cow is lit up, lit, lit up green and that star is stuck in the middle now which is good, that's what you want. And then these are the adjustments that it's sending to the telescope. Each one of those little um, spike things, uh, you get spikes one way and spikes the other. I think one is the, the right ascension and the other one is the the uh, de no. <laughs> as I say, I've forgotten a lot of stuff. I think that's working now, and it's following that star. So let's put that one back over there. That's working. Stars in the middle. 
let's zoom out and we'll take another photo of this and the problem is Mars is is it's like like doing what the moon does it's putting this red wash I don't, actually I don't think it's Mars is putting a red wash over but there is this wash of color that's washing that out um, so that's unfortunate it's not like I can do about that because I'm moving Mars I can't do that because I'm I'm not Q from Star Trek but um, what I'll do is I'll do a let's say 612 60 120 150 let's do 150 seconds capture on ISO 800 in fact that's so noisy let's I'll tell you what let's live dangerously let's do ISO 400 60 120 um, uh, 180 240 let's do that's 244 minutes that's that's a long time let's do 240 let's do four minutes so I'm going to do a four minute exposure um, Mars is going to wash it out a bit because it's really bright and it, that's going to make that dimmer but on ISO 400 it should clear up a little bit of that noise and then hopefully I can see what that is but I reckon I, I mean I reckon that's got to be a comet nothing else I know of that would look like that unless it's some alien spaceship um, but what are the chances what are the chances of stumbling across a comet when you happen to be photographing Mars there just happens to be this thing next to it I mean that's that's got to be pretty rare I mean it's a big sky up there and I'm zoomed in on one tiny tiny little part and the actual the actual chance of stumbling on on a comet, I presume it's a comet. That's pretty. That's pretty. I'm quite chuffed about that because I wanted, Mars isn't even, isn't even on my list. Um, I wasn't even intending to go there, but I just saw it was there. I thought it was bright. I needed a star to um, focus on, and uh, very cool. So right, I've got to kill a couple of minutes, and then uh, hopefully we'll get a result, and then I there's not much else I can do I, I don't think there's anything I could do that will improve on what I'm doing now um, I mean I suppose the other thing is to remove the double converter I don't to be honest I don't want to get involved with that at the moment because it, it just means I've got to reset everything up again that's the only thing with changing the lenses um, it's just not a it's not a quick process you know I've got to then get the batting off mask back on point it at a star tune it and tune it and tune it so it's dead right um, and, then, and then you know go off again but with the double converter at least I'm getting a closer look at this stuff because obviously with without it that would be half the size so um, you know you pay your money you take your choice but I think the double converter is a good compromise just to get a look at stuff um, but I'm presuming that is a known comment I haven't I mean, I'm, there's no way I could have discovered a comet. I'm sure people know about that, especially if it's that visible. Somebody else would have seen it. Um, but it's just curious. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So there we go. That's. I'm going to have to assume that's a comet. Possibly, possibly, comet Bennu. I'll tell you what, though. As far as doing astronomy goes, I think this was a good move. You know, putting putting the gear in your shed and doing it from there. Let the telescope stay out in the freezing cold. You stay in the warm in the shed and uh, with your beer, <laughs> not turning into a, a a beer popsicle outside. Let me have a quick look at uh, M42. I'm sure I'm pretty sure I saw M42 on that list somewhere. M42. Now I, I want to see if M42 is around simply because I know um, M42 can be quite visible quite early on. It's a, it, I think it's one of the brightest nebulas in the sky. Um, so there we go, it's there. Let's just take a picture. ISO 1600, 25 seconds. And I'm 
pretty much guarantee you will see at least some hint of nebulosity on this picture. Now I'm not going to photograph M42 tonight, I'll take a snapshot of it now, but I'm not going to photograph M42 simply because I've photographed it before, like I said, and uh, it was a really cracking picture, but it took all night to do. And uh, so I, I would never get a better picture than the one I've got um, tonight. Um, but, oh, see, look, there's no... I don't know what I'm doing wrong. There's no... Unless, unless I'm not actually looking at M42. I'm pretty sure I am. The right part of the sky. There's not even a hint of anything nebulous there. Now, now I know M42 is a, is a bright one. It should be... We should be seeing at least something. Oh, that's strange. My um, GoPro decided to die and the battery is completely flat even though it's been charging and the little charging symbols going up um, the battery has gone completely depleted so I've had to put another one in um, so uh, I'm not sure how far I've got basically I'm just trying to find M42 or just trying to photograph M42 I've just taken that picture there and that is um, so look, uh, 80 seconds at 800 ISO and there is no sign of M42 and M42 should at least be a little smudge on there, probably more. Um, so I can only conclude the telescope's pointing in the wrong direction. Um, so if I, the thing is if I go to, I don't know, just point it at the moon, it should go there. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I've done wrong. Um, there we go. Like I said, go to the moon, and there's the moon. And there it is. No question about it. It's in the frame. So it's going to where I'm asking it to. If I ask it to go to Older Baron, um, I shall send it off there. It should be a nice bright star. And there's no bright star there. <sighs> you know what? This means that possibly I may have been pointing the telescope all night at places in the sky that I thought was one thing and turned out to be another. Let's just go back to Mars again. See how that comet's doing. See, it didn't show up Older Barren, which is a really bright star. So I'm aiming for Mars now. So let's see... And now that's not showing up either. Let's just take a photograph just to be on the safe side, make sure it's just not too uh, dim. So I think my telescope has lost its position. And uh, yeah, it's pointing to the moon. I don't get that. That's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so let's just take one photograph here that should be Mars. I'm hoping it's not going to be because otherwise I'll be completely baffled as to why. Um, yeah, there's nothing there. Right, so I'm going to go and have to go and reset the telescope. What a pain. I'll be back. Right, uh, I don't know whether I fixed it or not. I think there's something wrong with my telescope and I don't know how to fix it. I might have to get onto some forums and try to find out. Basically, um, I point the thing at Polaris, I switch it on, go through the setup, you put the longitude and the latitude and the height above sea level and everything, put in the time and the date, uh, and then when it comes to the, the star alignment, I choose two star alignment and uh, it gives me a, a, uh, like a list of stars to slew to to like get in the center and uh, so the alignment star it chose was Capella so I know where Capella is Capella is due south just up there and uh, every time I said right go to Capella it would go to some completely obscure area of the sky and no matter what I did I I couldn't um, fix it so I'm going to try a thing now. The last time I did that, I've done. I've been trying to do it for about six or seven times. You know, switch it off, switch it back on again, go through the setup procedure, um, and then the, on this last time, when it pointed to what it believed was Capella, I 
actually undid the uh, the telescope and actually physically moved it and actually pointed it directly at Capella. So now it thinks it's pointing at Capella. So I'm just going to open Stellarium again and I'm going to... I haven't got the camera in it. I had to take the camera off, put the eyepiece back on. But uh, it should come up that it's pointing at Capella. Um, let's have a look if I can find it. Yeah, so it now thinks it's pointing at Capella. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get it to point to the moon. So hopefully it's going to go and point to the moon. And then I'll, I'll try a couple of others um, and see whether that's fixed it or not. Um, but yeah, I basically had to lie to it. It, it thought Capella was over there. Um, so I literally loosened it off and physically pointed it at Capella, but I don't think that's a very accurate way of doing it. Um, and whether it stays accurate or not, I don't know. Right, I'm just going to go look through the eyepiece and see whether that's pointing at the moon. If it's not, I think I'm going to call it a night. Unfortunately, it's pointing to some really obscure place and the moon's way up there. So. I've obviously got a problem, I don't know how to deal with it, and I'm not going to spend any more time out there, it's freezing cold out there now. So I'm just going to have to pack it away, I'll probably jump on the forums at some point and uh, try to explain my situation, see if anybody can help me out um, and suggest what to do. But I've, I've even tried a factory reset, I did a factory reset on the handset, um, but nothing is working. So at the moment it thinks it's pointing to the moon, the moon is up there and the telescope's pointing over there. Um, so uh, it's a shame because I haven't really got anything done tonight. I just, um, uh, it turns out I'm presuming some of the things that I thought I was looking at, I was not looking at. The only plus that came out of this was a, a, a an accidental discovery of a comet, which I, I can only assume it was a comet. Um, but uh, apart from that, I haven't really done anything. It's not been a productive night. But if you do have any ideas what that problem is, I'm currently using my EQ setup is the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, um, which is the upgraded version of the HEQ5 um, with the SynScan um, hand controller. But if you know what I'm doing wrong, I because I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. I, literally, I... When the telescope's off, I point the telescope directly at Polaris. Uh, this is how I've always done it. Switch it on, go through the setup, um, you know, adding all the data in the menu. I'm double checking my data. I've got my longitude and latitude right. I've got, you know, I haven't got north or south. I've got west or east. I've got those the right way around as well. Um, putting them in time and date. We're not in time saving um, at the moment, which is what it asks. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, everything I'm putting in is accurate. But when I say go to an alignment star, it 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 thinks they're somewhere where they're not. Um, so it might be a common problem. It might be a really simple fix. I'm kind of hoping it is. I have had this happen before, and I just persisted. And after about 15 or 16 attempts, all of a sudden it just started going to where the actual alignment stars were. Um, but you know why why that is the case and how I did it on the 16th time right I don't know um, but if you've got any ideas do feel free to let me know um, but yeah that's it other than that that's that's it for this video there's nothing more I can do so uh, I'm gonna have to sh cut this evening short uh, what time is it it's only 10 o'clock so I might be able to have a little bit of time um, on, on the telly or whatever for a while chill out and uh, maybe maybe even have another beer that'd be nice um, so there we go. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, that's it for this video. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you in another video, hopefully uh, sooner than, the, than another two months. <laughs> so until then, take care.